Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us for today's webinar. I'm Beth Waite Lefevre. I'm the Training and Implementation Specialist for PRC. And PRC Saltillo was really happy to sponsor Lauren Enders and our presentation tonight, Make It Fun, Activity Ideas for Jumpstarting AAC Learning. I'm going to take us through a couple of housekeeping tips, and then I'll turn it over to Lauren. All right. First of all, if you should have trouble hearing or connecting to this class, uh, first I would suggest logging out of GoToWebinar and logging back in. And if your trouble persists, you might turn your computer off and restart it and then log back in. Um, if you would continue to still have issues, I would ask you to contact LogMeIn because at that point we can't do any individual troubleshooting for you. Also, in the materials section of the toolbar for GoToWebinar, you will have several handouts there. So you want to make sure and get a hold of those. You've got um, several from Lauren as well as the ASHA information, and we'll talk about that more in a second. Um, also, there's a feedback survey. So as the class closes, you'll be asked to complete a feedback survey. So we hope that you'll do that as well. And then you're going to, um, you know, we have in here, you can type in some questions. So if you're having specific issues, you can type that in, and we'll try to walk you through the um, troubleshooting tips I just gave you. We have lots of information. We're so lucky to have 90 minutes with Lauren. So I'm not sure how much individual questions we're going to be able to get to. Um, you can type those in and we'll try to um, get to those at the end if there's time. Okay. Now, as far as ASHA, if you use the ASHA CEU registry, then you and you want to you know, apply for ASHA CEUs, then you need to follow the directions that are in that materials link. So you've got the ASHA bubble sheet. You're going to fill that out just like always. Make sure and include the date on that form as well. And you need to make sure and submit that to us within 15 days. So the instructions are there. So you need to follow the instructions to submit that. Uh, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people attending our training. So we're so excited that you're here. But we want to give you credit. So you have to make sure you fill the direction, follow the directions when you fill that out. Um, also, for ASHA, you do need to stay online the entire time. GoToWebinar uses a timestamp, so you need to be logged in and actively participating. For those of you who are not um, SLPs or if you're an SLP who tracks your own CEUs, you will get a certificate of attendance as well that you can use for that purpose. So at this point, I'm really happy to turn it over to Lauren, and I'm going to let her uh, introduce herself and tell you about her session. Thanks a lot, Lauren. Of course. So welcome everyone. Thank you for taking your evening to spend some time with me and learn about some hopefully fun activities. So I've entitled this Make It Fun, Activity Ideas for Jumpstarting AAC Learning. I do think it's important to mention that AAC learning and AAC therapy or instruction is really just language therapy. So anything that I talk about this evening could certainly be used for teaching language to someone who's not learning AAC. Um, I'm actually going to turn my webcam off so that you can see uh, my full slides throughout the rest of the presentation. All right. Sometimes it doesn't want me to click. There we go. Um, so I am Lauren Enders. I am a speech language pathologist. I'm a full time AAC and AT consultant in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Um, my claim to fame, I think, is that I am quite active on social media in AAC and AT and disability land. Um, I have a professional Facebook site, a Pinterest site. I do a little bit on Twitter, just starting to dabble in Instagram, but I'm kind of behind the eight ball on that one. Um, I have one scoop it entry on writing goals and objectives for AAC, and I've done um, a number of um, blog posts for practical AAC. If you need anything from me uh, after the fact, you can reach me at my email, which is l-e-n-d-e-r-s at bucksiu.org. So just some disclosures. Um, I am receiving compensation for the presentation of this webinar from PRC Saltillo. I receive a salary for full-time employment by my employer, Bucks County IU. I receive royalties from ExceptionalEd.com and SpeechTherapyPD.com for some web-based professional development courses. I receive speaking fees and travel reimbursement for some speaking engagements and conference sessions, not all. Um, and I occasionally receive codes for apps or therapy products for the purpose of reviewing products and sharing with others. In terms of non-financial disclosures, um, I am an ASHA member. I am an ASHA SIG-12 member, which is the Augmentative and Alternative Communication um, Special Interest Group. 
and I'm also a member of ISEC and USEC. So um, we've got kind of um, a lot to get through in 90 minutes. So 90 minutes may seem like a long time, but I have this jam packed. Um, so I have a, a number of learning objectives. The first is that you'll be able to name and describe at least two newly learned activities. I hope you can do a lot more than that, um, that you'd be able to go and use right away with an AAC learner. Second is that you'll be able to describe two activity resources that use music to teach core vocab. Third that you can name at least three examples of simple toys that move or can be moved and how they can be used to work on a language skill. Fourth, um, participants will share how a barrier or box activity can increase the fun quotients of any activity. And fifth, that you'll be able to name an app or an app category shared in this webinar and explain how it can be used to increase engagement by appealing to a student's own interests or clients own interests. Uh, now, you should be able to find all of the handouts in the materials link in the GoToWebinar pane. I also have, for your convenience, a QR code up here. If you want to point your phone or your iPad at that QR code, you should uh, open a folder in my Google Drive that has all the documents as well, as well as a bit.ly link. So feel free to take a picture, use your phone, or just use the GoToWebinar materials pane. So this is a little legend so that you know uh, on each slide I have tried to uh, put some little uh, icons that let you know whether uh, support that I'm showing or demonstrating is free, whether it's something that will cost you money. And I added something uh, within the last few weeks as our, our worlds have changed dramatically as well as the way we deliver services. Uh, I really did do a little bit of modification towards the end of this presentation uh, to add some things that work really well in teletherapy, but I also added to this legend so that if one of the uh, activities that I already had in the slideshow does work in teletherapy, I've added this little teletherapy icon. So you will see those icons on most pages that will let you know if it's free, if it's a fee, or if it works in teletherapy. So when you're planning a lesson, I think it's really, really important to ask yourself, would I think this is fun? Because if the answer is no, then I think it's really important to think about how you can teach the same language skill in a way that's fun. Um, because really, I think all of us know that we learn best and absorb the most when we are engaged, when we are having fun. And I think that maybe we don't always kind of step aside and take a look at some of the activities that we're using um, and not realizing that maybe they're not as exciting as they could be. But what is important to know is that for something to be exciting, it does not need to be elaborate. It not, does not need uh, to have exceptional planning time. So what I'm hoping to share with you today is a whole lot of ideas that do not require exceptional amounts of planning time, but that you can grab and add to your lessons with a variety of targets, um, language targets uh, and perhaps articulation or any other kinds of um, targets that you might want to use. So I love this uh, graphic. So this was um, a quote from Amanda Hartman, who works for Assistiveware and is an SLP. And uh, my friend Rachel Langley is an AAC specialist and she's great with graphics. So if you haven't seen some of the graphics that she's made, um, definitely take a look. I have on my Pinterest board a whole bunch of memes and graphics that she has created. And this was um, this is one of my favorites. Unfun should not be done. So remember, the language is about connection and not about testing or academics, especially now um, with our current situation and our, our teletherapy needs. And you know, in many cases, what we're being told is we are not providing FAPE, we are not providing free access to public education. What we're doing is kind of the, we're trying, um, but we're doing the best we can in the situation. So um, we're really working hard to keep kids engaged in this new in this new world we're living in, hopefully quite temporarily. Um, but really think about the fact that you are trying to build language, which is a, a tool for connection. Focus on the interaction. Worry less about elaborate activities and follow the AAC user's interests and their lead. So let's get to it. So on the web, I think most of you know about Practical AAC, created and moderated by Dr. Carol Zangari and the late Dr. Robin Parker. Uh, what a, one of the things that's spectacular about it is that it's searchable. So if you needed to look up activity and a particular 
um, area, then you can search. Uh, it's, there's content posted constantly, daily. There's additional content. Uh, there are practical thinking strategies of the month. There's videos of the week. Uh, and you can follow them on any number of social media um, sites. Saltillo's chat corner. Uh, I think one of the things that has really happened um, in the last several years as companies like PRC Saltillo, um, even if you're not using their products or if you're use, not using a, one of their devices or apps, um, they're, they're really doing a magnificent job of putting out implementation supports for teaching core vocabulary, teaching language to those with complex communication needs who need AAC. Um, so Saltillo, PRC, PRC Saltillo is, is probably at the top of that list um, and has been doing so for years. I think it's many of the others are, are catching up. I'm not saying that because this is hosted by, by you guys. Um, but Saltillo Chat Corner is one example. So it offers games and simple stories in a toolbox that help you plan implementation. And if you take a look at this example here, they're like full lesson plans that give you the words that you're working on. They give you um, one word, two word, three word targets. There are smart charts. If you're using, um, if you are using, let's say touch chat, um, there are smart charts to say the navigational patterns. So definitely take a look at chat corner. There are calendars. Uh, in the calendars, you can find things like principal, a large principal uh, dice that you can put together and roll that have core words on them. There are lesson plans. There are downloadable core boards. So, um, you know, if let's say that you're working in teletherapy and you're working on an activity, but you wanted to put the core board that matches your student's device along the left-hand side of your screen, uh, you could download one of the core boards uh, from Chat Corner. There's tons of them for um, for Touch Chat. Uh, games with smart charts, and there's lots more. So that's a really great resource. Um, part of that resource, and also with a separate link, is the Saltillo calendar. Uh, those, are, I know, are coveted at um, at conferences like ATIA. We always want to grab, you know, did you get a calendar? Um, because they're not only are they beautifully done, but they have activities within each month with resources. So really, really helpful in terms of activity ideas. Uh, we also can find implementation activities on PRC's website. There are um, there. If you go to the implementation activities section, you'll see a literacy planner, you'll see uh, a section called active with AAC, and you'll see implementation activities. I actually think I'm gonna let you check out this one on your own. If we have time at the end to go back, I think I'll play with this a little bit, but I th I'm thinking that we should probably look at some of the other solutions rather than um, watching this video, because there's so much to get through, and I think that you guys are all handy at uh, exploring the web. So teaching core through music, so many of our students are really, really engaged by music. Um, and I think it's important to remember that um, sometimes it's gonna be music for the, the younger set, and sometimes it's gonna be music that's more popular music, and we always do wanna consider being age respectful. So if we think about teaching core through music, um, I'm gonna just share with you some resources where you can find videos uh, that are really helpful as well as some other supports. So on YouTube, there is a site called Music with Ms. Marlowe, and she sings songs and she has added simple support uh, to both um, to songs and to book reading. So here is just a little example. The word is more. Find more on your board. More. I want more. I want more. I want more. Okay, so you get the idea. So it is important to note that in your uh, materials, in your uh, resources, what you have um, are four items. Two of them, one of them is my slides. Now there are a couple of slides missing because uh, I did do it last night and I'm always tweaking until the last minute, but just it's almost all there. Uh, but there is also something that I name as a resource list. And in that list, it's a grid and it has every single resource with a description of the resource, um, an image of the resource, a QR code, and a link, 
as well as a column that says whether it is something that is free or you have to um, pay for it. So I'm hoping that is helpful. So all of these, um, these slides that I'm showing you are gonna be part of that resource list. So you can just go to that at the end and you probably won't have to go back to my slides unless you want to. So here's another one, this is Miss Molly. Um, sometimes it's really helpful when you're looking for core word, core word resources to actually look up site word resources because there's so much overlap. So here is Miss Molly and um, she has 71 site words videos. There are actually other videos on her site as well that you might find helpful. Um, and I actually once took one of these and if, when you think about what, um, what we saw in the, the last video was how she put symbols up on the screen. I actually did this with Miss Molly's um, recordings once. So it can be done, it just takes a really long time. So if you have a lot of time, you can add symbols to these. Okay, so you get the idea. It'll keep going. Um, and, you know, sometimes to us, this seems kind of monotonous and dull, but for many of our students, um, repetitive things with a repetitive nature, things with music, things that they can watch over and over again can be really helpful. Um, and, and because these are sight words, they're almost all core words. And then you can get practice using devices, using core boards um, and also spelling. You know, don't forget about literacy so that you could also be using S because she's going through S, E, E repeatedly. So we could be working on both augmentative communication and literacy. So that's another nice one. Um, so there is this other YouTube channel called AAC Song Stories and Resources. And there's a whole bunch in there, but I'm going to just show you a couple examples. Here's one. <laughs> Do you like spaghetti yogurt? Okay, so what you see in both of these is lots of repetitive language. Now, if you were really good, I've actually in the last couple of weeks with all the teletherapy and me trying to actually help my staff get up to speed with some of the tech, the technology aspects of what we're now being asked to do, um, I've gotten a little bit of experience in we video or in other video editors so if you were uh if you did have that kind of experience think about you could take uh, particularly the one on the right um you could take the one on the right and you could use a video editor and you could um you could dub over the the sounds and you could use your own uh words so it could be think about you know the the opportunities there so if you whatever you're working on core vocabulary wise um it could be colors it could be shapes it could be and you could use the same character that of course is if you have lots of time on your hands which most of us don't but just a thought so um on that resource aac song stories and resources on youtube there's a focus on simple words and phrases it is geared towards young children i am going to show things for a variety of age groups this one is for young children it's 100, and, well, at the time it was 141, um, 
um, I should have turned my watch ringer off. At the time, it was 141 videos. It could be more now because this was a couple of months ago. Um, there's lots of repetition. There's various creators and sources. And there are some that are on this list that are actually specifically made to teach core vocabulary. So this is one from AAC Family Fun uh, that you can find AAC Family Fun on Facebook and on YouTube. And this is truly a family, an AAC family. I believe their child uses a Nova chat, I think. Um, and they post all kinds of fun ways to model language at home. And what I like about this is they're, they're keeping up with these um, on a monthly basis and they are taking core words and they are finding songs that can be used to practice those core words. So if you're working on eat the word, the song Eat It by Weird Al or the Apples and Bananas song, if you're working on the word happy, you can, you can play happy from Pharrell or happy together from the turtles. And this is, you know, thinking about those age respectful. If you're using popular songs, um, you certainly are able to kind of move more towards that age respectful um, area. So playlist of songs that feature repeated core words and the videos are featured um, on their YouTube channel so you can go watch them. Uh, then there's Rachel Langley's core word song list. This was something that she had come up with um, I think it might have been on her um, Facebook site uh, and I do have her permission to share this and this was just a running Google Doc that a bunch of us in the AAC community started thinking about specific core words and songs that um, could be used to teach them. So, um, you know, the word all, all of you from John Lennon's legend, the word all again, all you need is love from the Beatles. Um, so this is a really lovely list that will give you um, a whole bunch of popular song titles and the core words you can be practicing. I'm not sure how many of you are using wordless animated short videos, but if you're not, this is definitely something to add to your list. I have come across, I don't know if I've come across any students that are not interested in wordless animated shorts. It might be just finding the right one and the right kind of animation. So let's take a look. Um, there's a great blog post from Rachel Madel and Susan Berkowitz on how to use animated shorts or wordless videos to elicit language in AAC users. And you can find that on Practical AAC. Um, what they talk about is, you know, setting your intention. So what are you working on with this video? Pause it, model, rewind it. So it's not that you're just hitting play and then and then just sitting and watching it with the, the child or, or the, your client. You are, are very, very deliberate in how it's being used. You use repetition and just get creative. So with that said, I'm going to share a couple of my favorites. Um, and also talk about a list that I've made so that um, you don't have to do the searching that I already did to find all the shorts that would be um, appropriate to use in therapy. So, well, I say appropriate, but you know, usable. Um, I must admit that I am, um, I am someone who sinks to using bathroom humor with clients and students. Um, I'm all about engagement and most people think farts are funny. Um, I've come across a few that have not, um, but most people do. So here is an example of a wordless video that um, think about the language that you could um, elicit with this one. Yeah. Yeah. No, good job, good job. My turn. That bad. Uh oh, yucky. Down. So lots of language can be had. Um, there is a curated playlist of 27. Uh, actually, I, I keep using numbers. I probably shouldn't use numbers because you never know if they've added more. Um, of wordless videos posted by this Miss Cositas TV um, channel. So that's one place you can go. Um, this series, the first time I saw a couple of these, I was laughing hysterically. So I, I don't, um, it's a really interesting concept. And the concept is, it's, it's the Roland Wild, Wild series. And the concept is, if what if animals were round like balls? And what would happen um, in their daily lives if they were round? Um, so let's take a look. Oh, 
So think of the language you could use. All right, let's see if we have another one. What is going to happen? Uh oh. What happened? So lots of questions um, that you could practice. So I think they're adorable. Um, I don't know. I hope some of you like them as well. We could probably sit and watch a whole bunch of them, but we don't have time. So let's keep going. So this is the wordless video list that I created. Uh, and that you do have as one of the handouts in the materials pane and also in that Google Drive folder that I had given a QR code for. Uh, and I give you the link to the blog post from Rachel and Susan, as well as um, a handout. There's a handout on here from uh, Dr. Musselwhite, and there's some, um, some resources from, from Sarah Wu, who is an SLP. And then there are several pages of wordless animated short videos that you can find on YouTube with links. Um, so there you go. Um, you can also find a whole bunch of short video clips for speech therapy. Now, these are not all wordless videos, but they're all video clips. Um, I think most of them are wordless. Uh, they are video clips that um, can be used for therapy uh, that are curated here. So again, this is in your resource list. So all of these are in your resource list ready for you. So online subscriptions. Uh, AAC Language Lab. Uh, AAC Language Lab is, um, is a subscription service offered by uh, PRC Saltillo that I have been raving about for years. Uh, it used to be significantly more expensive, and when it was, I felt that it was worth every penny. Uh, it is now only $19.95 a year, uh, and I generally, I recommend this even if you are not supporting AAC users who are uh, using PRC or Saltillo products. Um, if they are using a robust core-based solution, then I think so many of the supports that are provided for us on the lab um, are just so helpful. So there's a language screener, there's full lesson plans, there are tons of activities, there's information about the stages of language. It's core word-based. If you do happen to be using a PRC or Saltillo product, there are smart charts. If you're not familiar what a smart chart is, a smart chart is pictures of the navigational path. So all, you know, all the icons that you need to hit to get to a certain word, um, those are on there as well. Um, there is also a Facebook page for AAC Language Light Lab where the lab's um, director, Jane Odom, um, who's awesome, she, um, she posts all kinds of new things that let you know what's happening in the lab and what's been added, and there's, there's stuff added all the time. Um, so it's really wonderful. You can check it out. There are, um, there is a, um, I believe for two months, you can actually check it out for free um, in kind of through this pandemic period. Um, and then eventually it will be uh, $19.95 a year again. Um, so let's just take a brief look. This is Jane. Welcome to the AAC Language Lab. The home page has a lot of useful information. You can see free resources, what are smart charts, and how to subscribe. At the bottom of the home page, you can see the latest update and what is most popular. It's best to begin in the Getting Started section. You'll see information and videos for how to use the lab, the core word starter set, language stages, the new AAC language screener, and how to use the search engines. Lesson plans can be used with any AAC system. All are based on common core vocabulary and aligned to the language stages. Feel free to do all the act. Whoops. Okay, so we don't have time to watch the whole thing, but this can be seen on the lab um, or on, on the web. I do, I think it's really important to note that um, I have used this slide before uh, when I was not presenting for PRC Saltillo. Uh, it really is that good. Um, so I, I do, it's wonderful if you are using PRC Saltillo products, um, but I'm not just presenting about this because of the, the my, my host today. So I think that's important to note. So there's also Realize Language, which is also a subscription-based product from PRC Saltillo, um, which is a really cool tool that not that many people know about that allows you to monitor and measure AC progress 
um, in individuals who were using PRC Saltillo products. Um, you can make word clouds from the most used words from a student's device or, or an adult's, you know, a client's. Um, you can create reports and analysis and analyses. Um, you can identify words, you know, let's say you were trying to figure out which target, which words to target. Um, this, this data collection tool will actually allow you to see what, what words are actually not being used at all. Is there, you know, are, are we missing prepositions? Are we missing um, past tense verbs? Uh, so there's some really, really wonderful supports through Realized Language. Um, you can pull up charts with, you know, how the language is being used. You can pull up lists of not only the words that are being used, um, but how many times they're being used. Um, you can see word clouds, like I said before. Um, so really cool tool, a really cool tool for you to just know about. Um, then there are Teachers Pay Teacher stores. And I think that right now, Teachers Pay Teachers is probably doing some really good business um, because, you know, sometimes this is the perfect kind of activity for us to use for teletherapy um, because people have already spent the time to create digital activities that we can then just use. Sometimes we can find some for free, sometimes we need to pay, um, it depends. So this was one that I just came upon uh, after someone posted on a Facebook page that is really, really impressive. If you are doing um, synchronous live teletherapy, um, I definitely suggest you check her site out. Super engaging activities, uh, very detailed. She's done a lot of work for us. Um, I'm, I'm really actually looking to learn from her. Um, I'm gonna probably buy a couple of these and try to figure out how she's using PowerPoint so extensively for some of these activities. Um, it is important to read the system requirements carefully depending on the technology your students are using. So if you have a student that's using a Chromebook, for example, they can't, um, they might not be able to use the activity quite the same as if the student is using a PC. So before you download, really consider, uh, and you're using this for teletherapy, not with some, not with a student sitting next to you, um, just make sure you consider those. If, if, if you're going to use them when you're back, when we're back in school or back in, in therapy, um, and you're going to be sitting next to them, then it's probably less important as long as it's, um, you know, on your system. And there are a variety of, of prices on, on her website, but there are th examples like um, she's taken caribou and she's made it digital. She's taken pig pop, so pop the pig. Um, she's got some barrier games. She's got spinner games. And this, this one, um, again, you can see my fascination with, with body humor, but again, it's, it's really because kids think it's funny and maybe I think it's funny too. But here is her um, description. But I am Brooke from Simply Speaking FLT. I'm so excited to show you this game, Gassy Gary. This is a PowerPoint game based on the premise that this guy here, Gary, eats a lot of junk food. And when he eats a lot of junk food, he gets gassy. So what we do is we can choose to feed him something. I'm going to feed him these tacos. And as you can see, I put my S initial words under here. So this game, you can add your own targets to, or you can play open-ended with no food underneath, uh, sorry, no targets underneath the food. But my targets are S initial, so I've got syrup under here. And I'm going to say syrup 10 times and then feed him the tacos. Okay, and then I need to spin the spinner. Oh, I got a gut buster. That means I need to spin again and add two to whatever number I get. Oh, four. So I've got to do six all up. Six is how many times I need to hit the fart button. If he farts while well, I'm on my turn, I lose a point. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. Okay, so you get the idea. Really, really pretty impressive. And when what I really like about this is this can be, you could probably use this with any target. You can stick your core word targets. You can stick your icons behind these foods. Um, you can customize it however you like or just use it open-ended like she said. So uh, now that one, I think Gassy Gary might have been like $15, but if it's something that you can use over and over again in therapy and you do have it in your budget to maybe, you know, buy a couple of things, I just felt that um, I would mention it. I have no connection with the, any of these um, products. It's just things that I've found that I think are pretty super cool. Bye. Um, Susan Berkowitz, she was the one that did the uh, wordless um, video post with Rachel Madel. She's got a very large TPT store with a lot of therapy materials that are core focused, games, interactive whiteboard activities and core boards. 
There's Jenna Rayborn Kirk, who just had a baby. Um, she's got AAC core adapted books and cooking with core lessons. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to doing as much cooking um, while doing teletherapy, but I'm, you know, we're going to be back in the classroom at some point. Um, <clears throat> AAC core word of the week packets. And then there's speechy musings. Um, so SLP Shannon, um, we're Werbex, Werbeckies, I'm not exactly sure. Sorry, Shannon. Um, some excellent time-saving AAC supports, activities, fun stuff, handouts, PowerPoints, principles. There's a whole bunch of stuff, and she does a beautiful job. Um, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with Dr. Carol Goosen's um, teaching resources. Um, this, her store is called Bloom. Dr. Goosen's is, um, you know, she's a pretty famous lady in the AAC world. Uh, if you're familiar with the color coding scheme that is the default in Proloquo to Go, that is the Goosen's Crane and Elder color, co uh, color coding scheme. So, um, you know, she's done a lot of work and in her retirement, I cannot imagine the hour she spends on each one of these, but she has harnessed the power of PowerPoint to create engaging animations with sounds that are customizable with crafts and games and poems. And they're all only like five or six dollars each um, and they can be customized and changed. Um, so really cool stuff. So here is an example of one. Um, because they're in PowerPoint, you can make them um, adapted with a switch, uh, just like you would with any other uh, possible with you know anything else in PowerPoint, as long as you have a switch interface. So here's an example. So what is Flubber? Now you can get, um, when you download Dr. Goosen's um, uh, they're called animated step-by-steps, These the, all these different activities. When you download them, you can choose to download them with PCS, so um, board maker, Mayor Johnson symbols. Um, you can choose to download them with symbol sticks with um, with uh, graphics for visual visually impaired, so high contrast, or with none. Um, I think it's really important to mention, I don't know if you've, if, how many of you follow the work of Drs. Erickson and Copenhaver for emergent literacy. Um, but it's really important that um, if you are teaching AAC, it's totally cool to use symbols because you are then, you know, can be teaching the symbols and where they have to go. As soon as you switch to teaching reading, you want to get rid of the symbols. They've actually been shown to interfere with development of literacy skills. So I, I feel remiss if I don't mention that. Um, so really, if you're keeping the symbols, you know, you'd want to be working on AAC. If you're working on literacy, you might want to scratch those. So but look what happens with your animations. She does all of these with just PowerPoint animations. So I'm going to just go through this quickly. What you need to do. She also has a blog where she talks about um, these supports and how they can be used, as well as some technology related to it. Um, and that's something really worthwhile. She has a she posts on Twitter uh, related to her blog as well. OK, so you get the point. So really, really cool. There's also some really wonderful mini books from Dr. Caroline Musselwhite. Now, Dr. Musselwhite, I think that most of you who are um, supporting those with uh, complex communication needs who are using AAC should know her name. Um, she is just everywhere in, in AAC land and just one of the most energetic, um, spectacular presenters and really is one of these folks that when she shares activities, they are doable activities. They are kind of ready to go. They're engaging. They don't take a whole lot of time. Um, and she's super into things being engaging, and she's super into also emergent literacy, as I was just mentioning, um, to Drs. Copenhaver and Erickson. So right now she's got some mini books in her store in Teachers Pay Teachers. I think they're only like $2.99, um, at least some of them. Um, she's added science experiments in AAC, social scripts in layered literacy, social scripts and pranks. How many of you have kids that would really love pranks? And think about pranks with your older students. They're great for secondary students um, and for adult clients um, with prank, you know, working with pranks. Um, and I know that she is working on a Poetry Power mini book as well. Um, so these are wonderful to have in your, you know, therapeutic toolbox, toolbox, let's say. Here's an example of what you might get um, when you download one of these mini books. So social scripts and pranks. Um, here's an example on the left, the bug in the ice cube. 
here's the vocabulary you would need, um, here's the script, here's the, you know, here's your attention getter. Um, I hot, one drink, here's your starter, I get, here, here's your maintainer. Um, so it's all there and then you can kind of just run with it. On the right, you see um, the fake vomit, core language. Hey, come here, I feel sick, my stomach hurts, oh no. And then you, you, know, you can have your magic trick fake barf. Um, so lots of really great, silly, some gross, um, but wonderful ideas from Dr. Musselway. So I think many of us have worked with teaching language with books, um, but there might be, we might be able to dig a little deeper with some of these. So let's take a look. Um, so why would we use children's books to teach core words? Well, it supports literacy development while working on core vocabulary. Uh, repeated reading supports learning and vocabulary development. It supports adult child bonding through reading and shared reading. Um, but what I really want to share with you is not the idea that you should use books, because I think you know that, um, but that there are a lot of lists that are out there that can help you with your planning time. So books for teaching core vocabulary. Here is one list from the Language Ladies that is free on Teachers Pay Teachers, where she gives you a list of however many core words, finished, hi, bathroom, no, yes, yes, no, thank you. And then she shares some children's books that can be used to, uh, to work on those targets. There's also a list of children's books for targeting nine core words from Gemma Holleran. Um, who's an SLP. So she's got in, on, up, more, want, go, not, know, see, and where, and she gives a number of options there. And then there's the list from Amazing Kids. This is uh, Angela Morad, who is uh, now a retired SLP that um, she's done a lot on social media with posts. Um, these are children's books that can target core, um, and she's got a whole bunch of them. And the way that she does it is she just lists a book and then after the name of the book, she talks about all the core words in that book that you could work on. So it's structured a little bit differently, um, but she gives a list of 70 picture books and then the words that each of those books could be used to, um, to work on. Whoops, I went the wrong way. Um, so then there's, or did I? No, I didn't. Uh, so books with repeated and predictable text. Again, I, I think that this is probably not a newsflash for all of you, um, for most of you, that re you know, repeatable, repeated and predictable text is a good thing when working with our students. Um, repetition is great for learning. Um, predictable is, is also great for learning um, and participation. So in, they include text that repeats throughout the story. It provides repeated opportunities for using target words, especially when the repeated target is the repeated line. It allows children to participate uh, in literacy activities before they learn to read, um, because those repetitive texts, we can put them, uh, you know, and we can put them into something like a step-by-step, -step, or they can be in their communication device. Uh, lots of things we can do with those. So there are three lists that I wanted to share of children's books with predicted and uh, predictable and repeated text. One is one that's been around for a number of years that's on aacintervention.com. Um, one is from the Monroe County Public Library. And one is a list on Goodreads, which I think had like 400 in it. Um, these are all in your resource list. So should you need lists of kids, books with repeated and predictable text, there you go. Um, I'm also not sure if you guys are familiar with the Core First book series from Toby Dynavox. So these are some early learning books that were created specifically for working on core vocabulary. They are free, they are printable. There's 36 simple printable stories. Each core word has a lesson plan and three books to go with it. And they work on things like pronouns, verbs, adjectives, articles, and negation. So these would be great to kind of add to your arsenal as well and they're free. Um, I'm really hoping that many of you or most of you or maybe all of you know about Tar Heel Reader. Um, if you don't, I, I would absolutely highly recommend that you go and spend some time poking around in the Tar Heel Reader. You heard me mention Drs. Erickson and Copenhaver and the fact that, you know, they are our go-to folks in the, in the land of emergent literacy. They did just, re um, they released a book uh, a new book this year, um, which I now own. Um, excellent, excellent resources. Um, they have created this resource, this free resource for creating 
and accessing really simple books. So think PowerPoint. So think just having a slide, having a big picture in the middle, and having some um, having some text underneath of it. But if you have a bunch of them, that becomes a book. And I, I think that sometimes we get hung up on the fact that something needs to look fancy to be a great activity. Not so. Um, so Tar Heel is great because there's a searchable database of simple books that other people have created. So if you have a student that's really interested in vacuum cleaners, I've had more than one of those, um, you could type in vacuum in the search and see what comes up. Maybe there's one that you would like to use. Maybe there's one that you would like to actually um, open up and make some changes to. Um, you can change backgrounds. You can add speech. The speech um, is not high quality speech because, you know, it's free. Um, but it works. Uh, you can enlarge menus. Not everybody knows that. So the arrows that you would use in Tar Heel Reader to navigate through a book can actually be enlarged in the settings um, to be really large on the sides. And um, there are tools uh, that allow you to create and share your own books and publish them. So if you create books, then you can publish. But the next one is the one I really want to talk about. So um, this is a this is a new um, support called the Tar Heel Shared Reader that was debuted at ATIA in January, um, and it is really, really cool. So what it does is it combines two resources. It combines Tar Heel Reader's um, library of age and ability appropriate books, so it's using Tar Heel Reader books, but then it adds a shared reading interface that supports adults in engaging students more actively and constructing meetings from text. So in other words, it's giving you an interface where there are symbols across the bottom and you can preset. Um, one of the things that Dr. Erickson and Dr. Copenhaver really talk about is that before you do shared reading with a child, and shared reading is an incredibly beneficial activity for both language and literacy development. Before you do that, um, you want to do a little bit of planning to look at each page and what words are you going to talk about and what are the questions you're going to ask. Um, so here is a little um, video that was created by someone named Miss Holman on YouTube that I found where it just gives you a little demo of what you might see in Tar Heel Shared Reader. So you would want to, if you were creating the book yourself, you would want to go into Tar Heel Reader first create the book and publish it. And then if you wanted to use it for shared reading, then you would pull it up within Tar Heel Shared Reader. They're not really quite integrated um, in, in the way that you open one and then can use shared reader. You have to go specifically into the shared reader um, if you want to use the symbols, but let's take a look. The title of the book is Feeling Good About Staying Home. Oh. I see a picture of a man with a thumbs up, and I think he's saying, Hug. Okay. Good. Yes, it is good to stay home right now. There have been lots of changes to our lives because we need to stop the coronavirus spreading. Oh, I see lots of yellow tape that says stop. Hmm. I think they want us to stop. Okay. Stop it. Okay, so when you open Tar Heel Shared Reader, you are able to go into the Tar Heel book um, that you want, and then you are able to select which words in that book that you want to be to have symbols available to you for. Um, you will notice that it does have speech. Again, it's not super high quality speech, but we're, we're, we're talking about a free support here, so I think we should just go with it. Um, but you can see how beneficial this might be. Um, really, really cool, and because you can create your own stories and then have access to those symbols. Um, so here we have a tool that has free access to BoardMaker you know, PCS symbols um, within a, a custom book. 
Okay, so wordless picture books. Um, you know, we looked at wordless videos, as, and we know that those can be really, really wonderful supports um, for you know all kinds of language activities. So, but there's also wordless picture books. So they allow the reader to create the dialogue and choose target words. The illustrations are typically really detailed because you need to be able to figure out what's going on in these stories without words. So they're really awesome for working on verbs and adjectives, especially. Um, and they're also helpful for working on inferencing, for figuring out what might be happening in these stories. So um, wordless picture books, there was a blog post from the children's library lady, um, seven reasons why wordless books are so powerful, and it gives them examples of some wordless books that you might use. So some more activities, here are some creative idea ideas. Science experiments, as we move right along. So here is a site, uh, this is Red Tricycle, that gives you classic experiments. Um, it's a compilation of experiments from different sites. There's materials, there's instructions um, for each experiment. And for, here's an example, a homemade lava lamp. Um, sometimes, you know, cooking can be a wonderful experience, um, but sometimes we have kids that are not eating at all. Um, so maybe we want to avoid cooking activities, but we still want to do that whole recipe kind of get the steps down thing. Um, so science experiments can be really, really awesome. You hear some weird noises. I'm not sure exactly what my dog is doing across the room, but don't think I can stop him right now. So it's not me, it's my dog. And one of the joys of, of presenting from home. So back to Bloom on Teachers Pay Teachers, um, science projects from Dr. Goosens. Um, so here are some examples. You saw the Flubber example earlier, uh, but here are some more examples of uh, just downloadable TPT um, science projects. So a bean experiment, a flower stem experiment, um, let's make a volcano, egg cola, there's, there's lots of them on there. Uh, let's see. Now we have science fun for everyone. Um, you know what, let me... Oh, well, I need to get my husband to get my dog away. Um, Science Fun for Everyone offers, there's a materials list, there's instructions, it is searchable, it is made for kids, um, and there are experiments, there are jokes, there's trivia, and there's science surprises. So really great website for you to know about. Sound effects. So sound effects are something that I've long been using. Um, you heard me talk about the fact that I tend to use bathroom humor because it's so engaging. So that kind of leads its you know, self to sound effects. And um, so there's a practical AC post that I did several years ago now on, uh, which is actually a full lesson plan on how I might use sound effects. Um, there's, uh, and there are some search, search engines, which is really, really cool. There are some search engines where you can type in, so let's, let's go back to the student that likes vacuum cleaners. Um, so let's say that you want to do an activity and you're going to surround that activity around either story making or something about vacuum cleaners. Um, maybe you're going to make a PowerPoint about vacuum cleaners or you do something. Um, but you need some vacuum cleaner sounds and you can incorporate sounds in, in many, you know, in Google Slides, in PowerPoint, all kinds of places you can incorporate sounds. And suddenly you can make a book more engaging yeah. because you've got sounds. Um, so with these sound search yeah. engines, you just type in vacuum cleaner and up comes a bunch of options for, um, uh, Sorry, I'm getting distracted by my dog. A bunch of options for different sounds, and then you can play them. You can determine, is this the one that I want? And if you want that one, then you can click to download it. So there's findsounds.com. There's freesound.org. Um, just give me one second. I'm going to text my husband and tell him to take my dog. Uh, the joys of working from home. Please get... Toby, S-O-S. -S. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to try to work through it. Fine sound stuff. Oops. I'm not going to show you that video. I think you can figure out how to use those. Um, Noise-making toys. So things like talking pens and sound effects apps and noise-making squeeze toys and sound effects machines, um, whoopee cushions. Uh, there's all kinds of cheap little noise-making toys that you can, um, that you can use. Uh, I have, you know, sitting on my right here, I don't have my, you know, well, I figure, let's just put it back on for one second. 
you get near, but you're still, okay. So, you know, things like this that I found, I think at five below, I'm hoping that you can see it. It's just a tiny little $5 fart machine. Um, that would work. I'm gonna turn my camera off again though, so that you can see my full slides. Okay, unboxing activities. So why is this eight-year-old child a multimillionaire? I'm not sure how many are familiar with this kid and Ryan's world, maybe he's nine by now. Um, but this child, I think the last I saw, he had something like $27 million. Why does he have $27 million? Well, he opens stuff on YouTube. That's what he does, and that's how much he's earned, which is telling you how much people are watching, particularly children, are watching the unboxing of things. So my thought is there's something to that. There is something to um, the fact that kids want, have, they want to see um, things you know, that are being unboxed because kids are curious. So how can we, um, how can we monopolize on that curiosity? Well, we can do things like barrier box activities. Um, they are re reusable, they are incredibly versatile. Um, so what is in the box? Can I see my turn? So you could do any activity, any, I mean, it could be anything. It could be a Mother's Day craft. It could be um, a science experiment. But suddenly when you put all the stuff in a box, then you can have all kinds of core vocabulary that really have nothing to do with that specific activity, but they're core words and they relate to them being able to see in the box, you know, um, what is it? Can I see? All those kinds of things. So here is a little bit of a snippet from Gail Van Tatenhove, um, who posted about this activity years ago and years later, I'm still showing it. So I'm not going to show the whole thing. Okay, so I think you get the idea. So I think she had some kind of craft in the box, but it doesn't even matter what's in the box. And so this is something that is reusable. You can use different vocabulary. All you need is a big box, so, well, that's cheap. Um, so really, really um, a wonderful, wonderful uh, activity. Um, and the fact that there's a barrier and that you can't see does that, it, it adds that curiosity element. So here's another thing. So when I was in the the, uh, the pharmacy right after Easter, I noticed that there were bags and bags of plastic Easter eggs. And there were ones that were, that looked like animal hides. And there were ones that were like metallic and shiny. And there were large ones and there were small ones. Um, and they were super cheap because it was after Easter. So I bought a whole bunch. And then um, I was asked to go help a, a paraprofessional who was learning to model AAC for a student who was trialing a device. Um, so I grabbed those and I heard that he, this little boy is, um, he, even though he's in first grade, he is already has literacy skills and he likes spelling and he likes letters. So I also brought a bunch of little foam letters, the kinds you might pop out of a puzzle or something like that. And I hid letters inside and he, we, there was so much language just from him determining, he would tell me the color of the egg that I would open, if he would tell me that, you know, he wants the one that's on top, he wants, we were doing all kinds of core vocabulary. Um, 
but it was related to opening the eggs. And then when we got a letter, well, then we had all kinds of activities that we could do related to the letter that was chosen. So um, important with any activity where you're using something that you can manipulate, whether it's an app or um, a movable toy or something, typically you wanna have the students or clients directing you to open them, directing you to manage them with their language, because as soon as they're in your child or client's hands, you may lose them and the language potential of that activity. Um, if they're really, really bent on being able to touch it, you may be able to, to strike a deal where they control it with their language for the bulk of the session and they get two minutes at the end when the timer goes off to be able to play with them, to play with it actually themselves. Cooking activities. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Accessible Chef by Anna Moyer, but it is cool. Um, they are, it's a very simple idea. They are visual recipes. It includes a custom recipe creator. Um, there are other resources like a tutorial or an article and videos. Uh, and basically, it is a site that was created for um, for individuals with disabilities and intellectual disabilities um, to be able to visually see the parts of a recipe. So let's take a little brief look. What we're going to look at now is Accessible Chef, which is a free online site that provides recipes in a very visual format for those with disabilities. You can search. I'm going to look for a breakfast. And let's see what I really want to make. How about a breakfast wrap? I can click to select. And then what I have are just some very simple visual supports, uh, ingredients and steps, um, a, a shopping list, everything all written out. So very, very nice. You can print them out. Uh, there's one other cool feature that I wanted to show you called the recipe creator. And it's exactly what it sounds like it is. It allows you to use their template, but then put in your own graphics and text. So pretty simple, pretty cool. Thought you guys would like it. All right. So that is the Accessible Chef. So then we have toys that move. And I'm going to try to go through this section pretty quickly. Because uh, in our current situation, um, we're probably not using these that much. We're, we're doing a lot of teletherapy, a lot of distance um, of distance therapy. So it, it's a little harder to use these kinds of toys, but we will be back to normal someday. So um, I figure I'll just kind of quickly go through them. I know I had to have fun with that. So wind up toys and eye poppers, they are fun for all ages. Um, if you have wind up toys, make it a race, be creative. Um, imagine the words you can work on when you have two or more going at the same time. Go, stop, more, turn, faster, slower, win, silly. There's all kinds of language that you can um, use. And I have found that from preschoolers up through, you know, elderly folks, most people seem to like these wind up silly toys like wind ups and, and um, pullback racers and eye poppers. And um, so there's also mouth openers, ball poppers, finger flingers. Um, you know, these these sticky ones like the chicken one on the left. I've actually seen flingable. I actually might I might have owned flingable poop at one time, but I did not bring it to work. So um, I thought about it, but I didn't. Um, so uh, the ball poppers can be really popular. Um, they make a great sound and lots of language surrounding those. It uses the element of surprise, like when's it going to happen? Um, it incorporates some fine motor activities into your language. Um, and you can just wonder, what do you think these little creatures are saying? Uh, pull back racer, pull back toys, um, fast, 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 get moving, pulling back, pushing forward, pushing buttons, make it go. And there are some weird ones like a pull back racing rat. Or um, so sometimes you can find some really interesting ones. Um, and remember, I said in the beginning, really try to um, Kind of feed into the interests of the individuals you're working with. So if you have one that likes animals, maybe try to find some animal racers. Or if you have them that like vehicles, then those should be easy to find. Um, you can see me having some fun with animations. So this is something that I used to do a lot years ago. And um, I, I kind of want to bring it back. Uh, you can still find these toys. So I'm not sure if you guys know, but if you have a, a, a student or a client that is using a dedicated device that has the ability to learn IR or infrared commands. So for example, the Toby I series, um, 
the accent, um, you know, so, some there's there's a Forbes device. There, there's a bunch of um, de dedicated devices that do have the ability to learn infrared controls. And the reason that they have that ability is built in is so that a user can also, uh, let's say, t change the, the TV channel. Um, oh my gosh, the dog's back. Um, so they can change the, the, um, the TV channel and um, you know, have much more independence. So um, there are a number of IR toys that are on the market, and I have to be very careful that you set, that you look for a toy that actually says infrared, because if it says um, remote control or IR, sometimes you actually look more carefully, and it's not an IR toy. It's it says gigahertz. Um, excuse me, one second. I think he has to go out. Um, so it says gigahertz, which means it's actually radio frequency. And radio frequency will not um, will not work with this feature, so it has to be infrared. But there are infrared remote toys that you know walk and burp and do all kinds of things, um, and you can program those commands into a button on those devices. So here is an example of a toy that I happen to notice. Um, I think I saw it in like my Facebook feed. And it was a wall climbing toy. They seemed like they were on my feet a lot, like Christmas time last year. And they show it as this wall climbing car. Um, and it hap I happened to notice that it said infrared. Not all, not all of them say infrared, but this one did. So I thought, well, it's only 20 bucks, you know. I shouldn't buy it, but I did. Um, it turns out when you turn the car on, it makes this fan sound. And it's basically a little vacuum cleaner, and that's how it sticks to the wall. But it's infrared controlled. So the first thing I did was I brought it with me to ATIA and I went to the, the first booth that, um, that I could find um, and they tried it out for me. So take a look. This was Forbes AAC that tried this out for me with their dedicated system. So I was pretty excited. I get I get pretty excited over these silly kinds of things. So that is just for you guys to know that infrared remote, and it again, it can be really hard to, to read the fine print, especially on Amazon, to whether it actually is an infrared um, toy. If you see an antenna on the remote, it's not infrared. Um, the, the infrareds are the ones that have like the little glass round bubble. All right, so also, did you know that smart speakers understand synthesized speech from devices? So um, these can give a communicator control, especially those who have complex bodies and have very, very limited or no motion. Um, imagine the power, at, you know, think about all of the smart speaker enabled things we have now. We can turn on lights with smart speakers, we can lock things, we can um, we can um, plug in appliances to an adapter that goes into the wall that allows it to be controlled by a smart speaker. So there's so much out there now. Well, they understand synthesized speech. So whatever kind of high tech system you have should understand, um, you know, whether it's Alexa or Siri or whoops, I've been Alexa. She's probably listening. Um, That's that you, not a name I can respond to. <laughs> she's answering me. Um, so you can turn music on and off. You can do things like flip a coin or tell a joke. You know, Alexa, you can actually, um, you can tell Alexa to fart. Of course, now she's not listening because I told her to fart. But um, those kinds of things can be really empowering and really exciting for kids. And you don't actually need to have a smart speaker because the apps on your um, phone will work as well. Um, so just a thing to be aware of that uh, in schools, you, there may be specific privacy concerns about smart speakers. So you may want to um, just be cautious about that. You know, I think some schools or probably most schools don't really want a smart speaker in there because they're listening. Um, but really cool activity. Fun with jokes. Um, I mentioned earlier about Dr. Caroline Musselwhite's Social Scripts and Pranks book, which is relatively new. Um, they're super easy to find jokes online. They're great for social communication. They're super popular. Um, 
I have, um, sometimes it's much better to actually either find a book or find a kid's site because jokes can be inappropriate. Um, but speaking of that, um, you might want them if you were working, let's say, with an adult client, but you're looking for something engaging, and maybe the inappropriate ones would be perfect. Um, so really, you know, for each situation, you have um, specific needs that you can tailor your therapy. Fun with photos. How many kids um, or adults, I mean, most people find um, taking photos, using filters, manipulating photos, fun. Think about how popular the filters on Snapchat are. Um, so you can use things like photo props, like you see on the far right there, where it's literally like those photo booth props. You can find those at party stores. Those can be fun. Um, live filter apps like, um, M, you know, MRR, MRR, and MSQRD, and um, there's a whole bunch of those. There are other apps that incorporate photos like iPad apps, iPhone apps like Toka Hair Salon Me. There are things like Jib Jab and Elf Yourself that you can use. Um, Zoomy, there's tons of those. Um, here's an example. Hey, we're in video mode. Look at me, I'm inside the crane. This one's a lot of fun. This is UCAM Fun. So that particular app was UCAM Fun, which I believe is on um, both iOS and Android. A lot of them are on iOS and Android. Um, I have, when you look at the symbols down the bottom, there's free and paid. You really have to be careful with these now. Um, the way of the world is moving from um, one-time pay apps to subscriptions because uh, companies are just not making enough money to stay solvent. So they're needing to have subscriptions, uh, which is fine, but you don't want to subscribe unknowingly. So be very careful with all of these uh, photo apps because a lot of them are going to subscriptions. So you may need to kind of X out and say, no, I don't want to subscribe. And you may still be able to use some of the features, just not all of the filters. So I do have a list called Fun with Photos app list, and that is one of your handouts. So these are all different apps that you can have fun with photos, whether they be filters or um, there's, you can see on the bottom left, Epic Photo Stickers Tune Blitz, that actually you put like little, little cartoon character body parts and things on, uh, you know, eyes and, and animal ears. Um, there's some digital storytelling, there's Animoji, there's all kinds of things that are in that list for you to peruse at your leisure. So some more activities that might be great for telepractice and remote instruction. Um, a new support that was released by PRC Saltillo is called Teletips, um, and that gives you a, a lot of great stuff in there. You can contact a consultant, you can, there are um, resources for tele-evaluation and re-evaluations. There are informational um, bits about teletherapy and trials, and there's also educational supports. So that's something that's new and out there for you um, to use for free. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know um, that you can mirror your iPad, thinking about this whole teletherapy thing. Many of us are now using our computers as our primary therapy tool through distance. Um, but we have all these iPad apps that are sitting. Um, so you can mirror your iPad to your computer screen. Um, if you have a Mac, that's easy. You just use AirPlay, it's built in. If you have a PC and you want to mirror your um, iPad, you can use either Lonely Screen, which is um, works with a free demo and it continues to work with a free demo. You get a pop-up, but you can close it. And Reflector 3, which is a little bit more polished, um, it looks more like a full iPad on your screen, but it stops working after a free we we uh, one week trial. So you would need to, you definitely need to pay for that one if you want to continue using it. And what this would allow you to do is show an iPad app and, and have the child control it with their language. Because even if you give the student remote control of your computer, if, you ha if you're on a platform that allows that, um, even if you do that, they will not be able to control your iPad even if they're seeing it on your screen, okay? So they can see and hear what's happening, but they can't control it. So perfect opportunity to have them control it with their language. So Pit Collage, which um, I think is such an underutilized app. Um, what I've seen is some incredible uses by Dr. Caroline Musselwhite, by Kate Ahern. Um, you can use it actually live during online sessions. Many times in the past, I saw it where it was being used. So let's say you had um, a predictable chart writing activity with a group of kids. And that's what it looks like um, Kate's example is here. They maybe they did some 
predictable chart writing or they did the, each each student provided an answer and then she um, collected all their answers and she found a background which I'm sure they were involved in finding and then she put the text in and she put some pictures in so it's a great way to document a great session and be able to share that and send it home or you know email it or print it or whatever you're going to do um, and you can create those posters um, but you can also use it live, which I had never thought about until I had the opportunity to sit in on one of Kate Ahern's amazing um, teletherapy uh, language sessions that she's running daily and has been throughout the course of this uh, pandemic. So you can have the communicator choose photos and graphics and backgrounds, where to put things. Um, but then at the end, you can download it and you can print them or email it and send it home. So let's take a look. So I'm gonna, I did a little bit of a demo. Let's see, we got 15 minutes left. I think I'm moving at a good clip. So hopefully we will get through everything. Let's take a look at how you might use pet collage in a therapy session or lesson. Let's say my student is super interested in vacuum cleaners. I'm gonna go with her interest and develop a language lesson with talking and writing about vacuum cleaners. If this is a teletherapy or distance learning session, I could mirror my iPad or iPhone to my computer and share my screen or active window within my video conferencing platform like Zoom or WebEx or uh, Google Meets or something like that. So I'm going to, within Pick Collage, I'm going to go for the freestyle option. And here I might say, okay, let's choose our background and ask the child to pick a color. And let's say she says pink. And then I'm going to click my check mark. The next thing I want to do is I want to find some vacuum cleaners. And I can do that right within the app. So I'm going to go to Web Image. And I can actually choose from images or GIFs, so animated GIFs. I'm gonna go for images of vacuum cleaners, so I'm just gonna search. And I would type out loud and spell it for the um, student, supporting literacy. Use her language. Um, or so have her spell just it. Just tell me the color of the vacuum cleaner that she wants. Let's say she wants a blue vacuum cleaner and a green vacuum cleaner. So I'm going to put the check mark up there and then I get two vacuum cleaners. Now I could leave them as is or I can actually remove backgrounds in here. So if I double tap on one of my images and select cut out and I can get the scissors, I can actually go around. Well, I'm doing this quickly, but normally I think I would try to get a little closer to the image. But you get the idea. That's the way I like it. And I can move it. Let's do this one. Cut that one out. Now, if this were a person, it will cut it out automatically. If you see that people next to the scissors, it says people. It's pretty good at cutting out people, and you don't have to do all this tracing. All right. So then we've got two vacuum cleaners. But let's say that I want to have an activity where we're talking about ourselves because that can be really really exciting and fun so let's add a photo oh i forgot that i did this and i'm going to add a photo of myself lovely if i double tap i can also do the cutout now there's a special feature where we can cut out a picture of a person so i chose that And there I am. And let's pretend that this student, um, let's use, oh, let's pretend that our student looks a lot like Baby Yoda. And that Baby Yoda picture, I used a Star Wars app and was using the AR section to put um, Star Wars characters in my living room. So think about the uh, think about the therapy so potential the there as well. It was a free activity. Star Wars app. Because these are just photos and images on the screen, we could have an activity where the child directs and says, oh, well, um, Mrs. Enders gets to use the green vacuum cleaner and I get to use the blue vacuum cleaner and we're gonna make it go up and down. Um, and we can use the screen record function on the iPad to create a whole movie. Uh, we can also add text, so, I like vacuums. Oops. We can move that wherever we want. Uh, 
so you get the idea, but it, there's quite a bit more you can do, but in the short time we have, I feel like that gives you a little bit of an idea. So isn't that cool? So I, I you know, when I saw Kate using it in that, in that way, I thought, gosh, that's so smart. Um, so, and what I mentioned was the fact that you can also use the built-in. I'm hoping you guys know that with your iPad that you can, um, you can screen record anything. So you can um, record all that movement. You can just, you can go in, you can turn your screen recording and your microphone on, and then just play with the app with your students, your clients. Um, and then at the end, then you would stop it. And then you have a movie of you moving all those things around and that can be shared or, you know, put into a book or, you know, put into a PowerPoint, you know, there's so many, um, so many ideas. Um, sometimes I think my head's going to explode, but, um, so I, one of the other things I was thinking is, you know, with all this teletherapy, um, sometimes we might want to search online for images with our students. Um, so then I went looking for something that would be a safe way to do that, because I think all of us have gotten some interesting results when we've typed things into a search engine that we weren't really trying to get. So um, this is called Kittle, and it's a kid safe search engine that's powered by Google. Um, so it's a visual search engine, but you don't get some of the scary stuff that you might get in your typical Google image search. So good to know about. Um, so this was something that came about. Um, because I had an SLPA that said, "Ugh, I'm using, um, I think she was using PowerPoint or Google Slides. She was using a lesson picks activity uh, in PowerPoint, lesson picks downloaded in PowerPoint. Um, if you're using lesson picks, there's an awesome, awesome new feature where you can download it as a PowerPoint with movable tokens. So look for that online, look for their tutorial for that either in PowerPoint or Google Slides. They give information on both. But so this SLP, SLP contacted me and said, the only way I can use Dice is that I can find an app for Dice, and but then I have to have it in a separate window. So I went searching. And what I found was this free extension that works within your Chrome browser. So for example, if you're using Google Slides as your activity, you can add this Chrome extension called Really Good Dice. And I'm going to play this that I just did with Chris Bouguet the other day. And you'll, I'm going to demonstrate this in a second. And that when I click it, it sounds like rolling dice. So I'm going to turn that up to 100%. And then I have the option. So this is a limited extension. I also have the option of anywhere from one to 12 dice to be thrown. So I'm going to choose two and I'm going to save the settings. So then I'm going to go to, um, let's see. All right, let me go know, forward Google a little slides. bit till I find an activity thing um, on the screen. So I'm in a Google Google Slides presentation. If I click, if I say, okay, it's time to, you know, it's time to roll. If I click on that little die in my um, and that's in my because I there, installed the extension. That's it. And I love the sound it makes. So that's Chris. That's my friend Chris Bouguet, who is an awesome yeah, presenter. If you ever get to see him, they're gone. So I click somewhere in the background, they go away, and then. So isn't that cool? So those of you who have been struggling with dice, um, there you go. Now it only obviously is going to work if your activity is within Google Chrome, um, within the browser. But uh, it is really cool. Let's see if I can get. Um, this is Snap Camera. So, um, you know, talking about things being engaging with, with photos, um, if you are using Zoom, you can automatically change the filters with your webcam. But if you were using some of the other, um, the other uh, virtual, um, you know, video conferencing software options like WebEx, um, uh, WebEx, uh, WebEx Teams has some options, WebEx Meetings does not. Um, so if you wanted to add some funky camera functionality to your webcam, you can actually download this app called Snap Camera, um, which allows you to use filters with your webcam on your PC or your Mac. Um, it works with most of the video conferencing platforms. Um, I would be careful and pre-select filters. I would say that not all of these filters are probably appropriate for kids. Some of them are a little weird. I don't know if any of you saw the the thing where the boss was a potato for the whole session. Um, it was like a Twitter viral Twitter thing where the boss accidentally uh, made herself into a potato. That was with this app. 
Um, so simply adding a silly filter can increase the fun in a lesson. Um, did you know that in PowerPoint or Google Slides that if you add images onto your screen, but you don't put it into slideshow or presenter mode, then you can continue to move the images around. So for example, a game board and you can put pieces. Um, if you have a video conferencing platform and it you the device the student is using and your platform make it combat compatible with remote access you can get your students to move the objects on your screen but if you don't um, if they have office 365 or google slides and you share it if you also have office 365 or google slides and you share it as one of those files then you can actually both be working in the document together and they would be able to move pieces so that's another you know that's kind of a thing in and of itself but there's lots of stuff on youtube especially now um, with our teletherapy mode so tips and tricks why didn't i think of that we got five minutes left let me see what i can blow through here um so puppets for modeling i love this idea um this is kate ahern look what she did she stuck a finger in a puppet Oh, in uh, and out. You're pouring it out. Yeah, put it in. In. Good job, Samantha. Put the rice in and take the rice out. Out. Good job. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, in and out. Yay! So what she did, she Samantha loves Santa Claus, so to make it more engaging, all she did was poke a hole in Santa's hand and she activates the device through Santa with a Santa voice and suddenly it is engaging. Um, screenshots and cropping, um, I'm sure that most of you were using screenshots and cropping, um, but I do have a couple of slides. Um, you can use screenshots and cropping for selecting um, icons from your apps, from you know all kinds of things. So there's some information about screenshots on the iPad and the iPhone, um, screenshots on the computer. It's a different process on PC or Mac, but you can do that. Um, important to know about new voice pass and chat editor software from PRC Saltillo. Um, they're awesome for creating therapy materials with symbols that um, are on their devices. So there's Unity or Lamp Words for Life. You would use the Write with Icons feature with New Voice within New Voice Pass software. And in the resource document is a video for how to do that. So we don't have time to watch my video. Um, there's also this Oh, the Things You Can Do uh, Megan Take session that with it was recorded that's on uh, YouTube as well. Uh, there's also this awesome document from PRC. I don't know how many years old it is, but I love it that just talks about activities like blocks or chasing or bubbles. And then it gives one word, two word phrases of core vocabulary and activities that you can do with those. Um, and don't forget to print and send home student work. It provides data, it shows progression. It allows the child to share and be proud of their work. Um, and it helps teach kids that writing is a form of communication. So right now we might have to be emailing their work um, but, you know, don't forget about the emailing and printing and the permanency um, that is so important for kids. Woo! So I think I made it. It's 8.30. We are pretty much out of time. Well, it's 8.28. Um, but I want to thank you. I know that that, that was a whirlwind. Um, just to remind you that, you know, I, I selected things that I thought were engaging and fun and um, accessible. Um, there's a lot more where that came from, and hopefully I'll keep uh, plugging away and, and making more um, presentations of different ideas, because um, I know that these kinds of things are really, really badly needed. Um, as we have less and less time, I don't know about you, but especially with this new teletherapy thing, you know, the workload is, is increased, you know, many fold. Um, so I really do hope that you guys leave with something valuable, um, that you uh, meet those learning objectives that we saw in the beginning, um, and that you have some fun. So I think we can kind of wrap up it. I don't know if we have one minute for questions. I don't know if... Um, well, Lauren, uh, that was awesome. And we're just seeing so many things in the, in the chat. People are just saying it was amazing. They would like for you to show your um, bit.ly and your QR code again, if you would. Oh, sure. And um, of course. people are just saying, you know, thank you for the great resources, the ideas, um, so much fun. 
Uh, awesome. And um, also people have asked about recording. So we um, did record this webinar and it will be um, housed on the Saltillo and PRC YouTube channels. So that will probably be in the next couple of days or so when that gets posted. So you'll have access to that um, as well. If you would like to see that again. It's always good to go through and look at stuff again and kind of digest it after you've heard it once, especially when there's so much information in here. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up then. Thank you so much again, Lauren. We so appreciated having you here. Thank you, everybody, for um, attending our webinar. And we hope to see you again. Hope to see you again another PRC Saltillo webinar training. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone.